Hey, Juan, this is Charlie Cartman calling from New York City. I was wondering if you want to draw Superman and Mr. Mickey's big lip. And I said, that's how you say that name? <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, uh, welcome to Inside Comics. Uh, real quick, if uh, you like this content, uh, subscribe and tell a friend about it. Uh, today, I'm super psyched to have in studio uh, <laughs> uh, my main man, John Delaney. That is. Howdy, good to be here. Yeah. Uh, John, I wanted to talk to you about um, breaking into comics as an artist. I think a lot of writers kind of have this impression that it's like super easy breezy for, for an artist to, to crack in. When, uh, when it's a little bit more difficult for a writer to get an editor to even read your story. Yeah, I, 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 I can certainly see why they might think that way, but it's, it's very, very difficult, as most artists will tell you. You know, you're going to comic Con with your portfolio, and you're lining up, and you're showing it to editors and that. In my particular case, it, it took, uh, it was an 11-year journey, so it was a long, long time. I started sending in uh, submissions, I guess, when I was uh, 16. And I would send in, I would do up uh, three or four pages of, uh, say, Batman for DC. And I usually chose characters that had multiple editors because that way I could send them all the, the different editors all the pages. So I'd make up these photocopies of these pages and I'd send them in by FedEx. This was back in the day when we used to take unsolicited material. It's very hard to do that now, so you have to go to Comic Cons. But um, what I did was I would do that for uh, in January. I'd send in six uh, pages of continuity to uh, DC. And then in June, I would send in six pages of continuity to Marvel. And I did that for 11 years. Uh, <laughs> I got some great responses. Uh, it's one of my favorite ones came from Dick Giordano. Uh, the late, great Dick Giordano was an amazing editor at DC. And he gave me tons and tons of advice for what I could do to improve. And I sent in a daredevil to Carl Potts at Marvel. And he wrote me back a great letter about what I needed to improve, books to read, like Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain by Betty Edwards, things like that. So I was very, very fortunate that I got a lot of encouragement that went through it. But yeah, it took uh, 11 years and finally, <laughs> and uh, now a lot of people will build their portfolios uh, online, uh, and also they have a, an Instagram page or a, a, a Deviant Art page and things like that. And, and you have a, a, an, an Instagram page mm -hmm. at John, John Delaney Forty. And uh, sometimes people reach out to you and and ask for commissions. Uh, are you open to that? Oh yeah, I love doing commissions, especially you know during this period of time during COVID and that it's been tough because there hasn't been the Comic Cons. At Comic Cons, George and I have done tons of Comic Cons together, we're usually side by side, and he sees how I blast through these commissions because that's what people want, I believe, and anyway, when they come to get a commission, they want the, the experience of um, interacting with the artist as well. So I try to make it a, a thing that they can sit and watch me draw it and you know, I keep it loose and I don't charge a lot just so that it can make that experience. But now, um, with COVID and that uh, I have to do them all uh, by Instagram and I, people have been wonderful about reaching out and if you ever want one just uh, DM me and we can talk about what that could be for you. Uh, what advice would you have uh, for any artists that, that are trying to get noticed? Uh, what, what should they do? Well, that, that's great. You know, I mean, one of the things that was really great about DeviantArt was giving people a, uh, an immediate sort of showcase to, to editors. And for the long, longest time, the editors basically would only look at, at stuff that came into a Comic-Con or or, uh, you know, came across uh, one of their tables or was recommended to them from another artist. But what the uh, social media has, has provided for artists is this platform. So the best thing you can do is constantly get your stuff out there, hashtag it to the people that would be looking for it, that they want us, you want people to actually get the eyes on it. A lot of times it takes a while, right? You've got to build up a, a little bit of a following. You've got to build up a lot of people talking about it, get people to reshare it. It's super, super important. Once the editors start to see and I know this from many, many conversations with them. Once they start to see some, some heat behind what you're doing and you're seeing a lot of people reposting and getting that out there, suddenly they start to take notice. So a lot of these younger artists that are kind of coming out right now and have got this just fantastic styling that is sort of moving away from the traditional way of telling comics, that's all coming from that. That's coming from guys just breaking out of the idea of this is what it used to be and saying this is what could be yeah, for tomorrow. So that's exciting. Yeah, I think it's uh, important for maybe new artists to, to recognize that you're probably not going to, to land a gig well, like you did <laughs> yeah. working with the, with one of the big two on your first books out. Um, you know, it, a lot of times you start doing independent projects too. And that's where I've found a lot of my artists have been uh, like MJ Hiblin, Benzel Tabanis, Mina Petrovic. I all found them on Instagram. Yeah. Like uh, all three of them uh, were just posting regular work and uh, 
And then I reached out to them and we started collaborating on stuff. And now we have uh, like a graphic novel that we can show editors too. And, and it's and, a huge difference. You know, once you've even self publishing, right, that shows that you're serious. And that's what editors want to see. They want to know that you can hit deadlines. I'll tell you what, I've been working on this industry for a very, very long time. And the main reason is because I rarely ever miss a deadline. You know, sometimes it's not even that you're the best artist that, uh, that's that been chosen about all the other things. It's that you're consistent. They, they can count on you. They know they can. So that's a really, really important part. So once you've been putting out some of your own stuff, they're going to see, oh, look, they hit deadlines. They get things done. And they're enthusiastic. You know, we all want to, I mean, I think most of us want to work for the big two. You want to work for Marvel or DC. You know, at one point, you want to kind of get in there and play in that sandbox. But it doesn't come right away. It takes, it takes a little while. And you have to keep plug, plugging away. In my 11 years as I was setting in submissions, I was also working in animation. I was storyboard uh, supervisor on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I directed Voltron for us. I directed uh, Chaotic. I did a lot of things. And because of the fact that I was drawing all the time in animation, your skill level goes up, up, up. And suddenly the people at DC called up. It was Charlie Kochman. He said, hey, John, this is Charlie Kochman calling from New York City. I was wondering if you want to draw Superman and Mr. Mitty's Piglet. And I said, that's how you say that name? <laughs> <laughs> So you've worked on like a ton of cool projects. You've done uh, Justice League Adventures, uh, Scooby Doo, uh, all sorts of like. Uh, you've worked on like the Ninja Turtles animated series, uh, tons and tons of stuff. And I, I'm wondering if you can talk about um, maybe. Oh, I'm forgetting out of The Simpsons, Futurama, and all the, all your Bongo stuff too. Um, what uh, what have been some of your your favorite projects that you've done over the years? Oh my gosh, I've, I've had uh, a lot of really, really great ones. Um, one of my absolute favorites is Superman vs. Lobo. Um, uh, David McElhenney uh, wrote it. He was one of my favorite Superman writers. He just really gets the character, and he really gets Lobo. So that was really, really fun. Another big favorite was Justice League uh, Adventures. We, I did one with Scott McCloud, and uh, that was incredible. Scott McCloud, of course, understanding comics. Um, he's the man, right? And uh, we, uh, Scott and I saw each other uh, at the Eisner's one year, and he actually told me that he asked for me. So that, was, that made that kind of special. So I think those are probably my two favorite ones was the Jean Jones uh, Justice League one that I did with Scott and Superman vs. Uh, Lobo. But like you said, I've, I've been very fortunate. I've had a lot. <laughs> so I've done like The Simpsons and I did Death of Comic Book Guy, which is great. We got nominated for an Eisner for that. So that was cool too. So yeah, I, it's hard to put a pick one, but there's a couple. Yeah. Um, so for the last few years, you've been working uh, on developing a, an app called Comic Stream. And I'm wondering if you can talk about where do you think the future of comics is? Well, for me, comics, um, you know, I, I love, obviously, the, the medium. But I think that it needs us to take the next step so that it has a, set, a sense of gameplay. Uh, so much of what we do now on our phones, on our apps, our devices, and that are a much more of an interactive experience. And, you know, there's been a couple of things like we, we know all about uh, motion comics and that kind of thing. But they're not really interactive. They're, you're still kind of watching a movie. So I think that the future of comics lies much more into the idea that you would interact with it. And that's what we were trying to do with the comics right So uh, one comic book that you've been uh, working on is uh, called Doc Knock. And uh, he's got such a cool design. And I'm wondering if, if you can tell us a little bit about who Doc Knock is. Sure, yeah, no, thank you very much for asking about him. Um, Doc Knock is an original creation that I'm writing and, and drawing. Um, it's, it's one that's uh, very close to my heart. I really love the idea of, you know, alien beings uh, coming to Earth and all that kind of thing, but Superman did that so well. I wanted to kind of create something that might be uh, a little bit of a different turn. So in this particular case, this alien being starts receiving messages from a distant planet and believes that the messages are actually um, hurting his people. Uh, because they're an electrical uh, planet, electrical beings, they receive the messages immediately right into their consciousness. So he feels that people are being affected. So he decides to send a, uh, a bomb, essentially, to this planet to uh, wipe out their, their telecommunication systems, like an EMP. Doesn't realize, of course, that that's going to wipe out all of their systems and uh, you know, possibly cause a lot of death and destruction, and that planet's named Earth. So once he realizes that there's sentient beings on it, and then he figures out what these messages actually are, he races on his way to, to try and stop the very thing that he caused. Uh, you, you touched on Superman there. I know he's one of your favorites. You're wearing the, the yeah, Superman yeah. shirt today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And for people who haven't seen past episodes, this is actually uh, our studio um, called Blood City Studios here in, in Kelowna, BC. And this is John's backdrop. <laughs> I've been kind of borrowing it for the inside comics show. My side of the studio is less interesting. <laughs> but uh, okay, so yeah, you touched about Superman, and you got the kind of shrine here. Yeah, right. I'm pretty into the big man in the red cape. Um, what do you love about that character? Well, I love 
I, I, okay, I'll, I compare them to, say, Batman, because people always sort of pick the, the, the one of the two. And Batman, I get it, it's this sort of sexy revenge story, and, you know, he's, I'll never let that happen again. And Batman's very, very cool. When you're younger, you kind of go, yeah, I can do that. I can train myself, and I can do all these things. Superman is a being that could literally take over the world, and yet chooses to take crap from a boss every single day, sit in a room with a bunch of other people, just so you can be close to the truth or close to the news feeds to help. And I love the idea of somebody with that much power and that just wanting to help, wanting to do the right thing. And when he's handled the right way, when he's written by guys like Morrison or Wade and, and uh, even uh, Jim Kruger is an amazing, got amazing Superman stories. Everybody who really touches on him gets that idea. He's not a big boy scout, like the way that, that a lot of people kind of want to dismiss him. He's a, uh, a savior. And, and the beautiful thing about him is he wants us to save ourselves. One of my favorite lines by Grant Morrison in uh, All-Star Superman is when he said, when the girl is about to jump off a building, he stops and he goes, you're much stronger than you think you are. Believe me, I know. He's giving the strength to her. And that's the greatest part about Superman is that he reaches out and tries to help other people be the best they can. Rather than constantly saving everybody, he wants to actually help them save themselves. I just dig that. Yeah, no, he's super, super inspirational. Yeah. Uh, John, I want to thank you for being on Inside Comics, dude. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, I hope to hit the convention uh, circuit with you next year. Yeah, man, we're going to definitely do that. I can't wait.